simply knowing how a candle gets formed is going to be key to your trading. Without this knowledge, you are at a significant disadvantage. A candle is simple. All it has is a body and two wicks above and below it. This is the majority of the time. 99% of the time, the candles will have this. It's very rare for a candle to not have one of the wicks. But essentially, it will always have some sort of body and some sort of a wick. So, if you look here, on the lower time frame, so right now we're on a daily, on the lower time frame, it all depends on how this certain candle closed, whether it's a bullish closure or a bearish closure, which will determine how the lower time frame will look like. So here, we have a bullish closure. This is the high of the candle, and this is the low of the candle. This is your bottom wick, and this is your upper wick. And here you have the body. So, how was this candle formed? Well, it started off of here, that is the open of the candle. Price came lower to create the bottom wick of this candle before that expansion higher to go from the low to the high. That is the range of this candle. When price retraces towards the end of the candle's lifespan and has a closure between the open of that candle, so the open was here, between the open of that candle and the close of that candle, this is where you would get your body, this range over here, which is exactly what you get right there. So, knowing how that candle gets formed, this will help you in not only your bias, but also your entries. And this is the same for every single asset. Every single asset will have candles. And every single candle will have those five characteristics. Low, high, upper wick, bottom wick, and the body of that candle. Right, so here, on Bitcoin, price is heavily bearish, right? On this daily time frame. If you look at this segment in price, look what it does here. It comes into an imbalance and then it distributes lower. This retracement into that imbalance was to simply mitigate more positions before distributing it lower to take out sell side liquidity, which are resting below here. That is essentially what this price action done. If you are anticipating that, which you rightfully will, because we are in a bearish scenario, this means this price action here. The bearish candles that get printed from the open to the low of those candles, this is where you will take the majority of your profits. And because you know that in most candles there will be some form of an upper wick, on the lower time frame, this will be seen as bullish price action. But because your higher time frame is bearish, after it has come into a higher time frame imbalance, in line with your higher time frame bearish direction, this lower time frame bullish price action you would not be tripped up with because this is simply just to create the upper wick of your daily candle. You go down to the hourly, this is what I mean. Here, these were essentially the upper wick of your daily candles. You get a miniature bullish price action. The examples here aren't so clear because the upper wick isn't that significant. But if you look at candles here, such as this one over here, again, we are still bearish here. This was the open. How did it open? Price moves higher before it expands lower to create the low before it retraces back to the close. So if you drop down to the low time frame, as you can see here, it's a very significant bullish up move on the lower time frame. But because on the daily, you were aggressively bearish, and before this candle printed, what does it leave behind? It leaves behind this bearish order block after sweeping this low. So remember, the two functions in price, seek new liquidity and rebalance old inefficiency. A lot of times, this isn't going to be your obvious imbalances and fair value gaps, because at key PDRA levels, there will always be some abundance of liquidity that price would come back to rebalance regardless. The goal is, is to simply accumulate more shorts in this bearish scenario to distribute it lower. Hence why this bearish order block is a valid key level for price to retrace back into, after sweeping this old low, which is also another key level, right? But the two functions of price, seek liquidity, rebalance, old inefficiency. So because that is the idea on the higher time frame, in line with your bearish higher time frame direction, this means when you go to the next candles opening, in this case, it is the daily candles opening. Yeah, this is the opening line. Anything above the opening line is going to be your manipulation in a bearish candle and then price will expand lower. From the high of the manipulation to the low past the opening line, that is your expansion. And then here you have your retracement. It's simple, it's essentially your power of three. 
So once you know how a candle gets formed, this will give you a much clearer image as to where price is going, especially when you pair it up with your higher time frame. So if you look here, we know that price has an aggressive move higher into this bearish order plot. But if you look at this segment in price, it's not so clear where price is currently heading towards. All you're simply doing is playing within this range. There's no strong conviction currently in which direction price is heading towards on your lower time frame being the hourly. So when you pair up with the daily time frame, it becomes significantly more clear. The daily is clearly bearish. So any bullish price action on the daily should only be seen as a retracement. Those type of retracements will have aggressive bullish price action on your lower time frame. But the conclusion here is you will be favoring for bearish candles to print. And any bullish price action on the lower time frame should only ideally come back to your higher time frame premium rates to mitigate and accumulate more short positions before distributing it lower. So with that in mind and your knowledge of how candles get formed, bullish price action on the lower time frame should ideally be your manipulation if you was anticipating for your candles to print bearish on your higher time frame. And why would you be anticipating for bearish candles to print? Because your higher time frame, like I said, is bearish and it comes back into a premium range. So that's exactly what you get here, right? This is the opening line of your daily candle. Price comes higher, but because on a higher time frame, like I said, you're bearish and you have come back into a premium rate, you anticipate this to stay respected. So this bullish price action is simply going to be seen as a manipulation. Now, look what you get there. You get an aggressive move lower, take out this swing low. That becomes your market structure break. And as you can see here, if you play out to the next candles opening, from this to this, that is one daily candle. Look at how it moved. If you mark out the close of that candle, right, mark out the close of the daily candle, you can see here that from the open to the high of the manipulation, that is where you had your upper wick. From the half of the manipulation to the bottom of your expansion, that is where you have the range of the candle get created. And then here you have a minor retracement. But that minor retracement is going to be a general retracement. You don't have an exact pinpoint of how the body is going to close until it actually closes. This last candle is the closure of your daily candle. So the range from the low to the actual closure, that is where you have your bottom wick get created. And of course, between the open and close, that is the body of the candle. So you jump onto the higher time frame. That is exactly what you have here. Bottom wick, upper wick, and the body of that candle. So with that knowledge in mind, depending on how your higher time frame is set up, and like always, this is relative to what time frame you're on. So just because the daily is my higher time frame, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be your higher time frame as well. You can have the hourly as your higher time frame, for example. But because price is fractal, it's the same thing. Candles appear on every single time frame they will always have the same characteristics. So to recap, the higher time frame direction, depending on what you anticipate for the higher time frame candle to print, that will determine how your lower time frame is going to move during that higher time frame candle's lifespan. So if you was anticipating for now, price to take out this low, you would be favoring for bearish candles, right? But because you are favoring for bearish candles, that means you are likely going to anticipate for a bearish candle to print. But you know, bearish or bullish, there will always be an upper wick and a bottom wick. So with that knowledge on the lower time frame, the next candle you want to see some sort of manipulation. The next candle you want to see some sort of a manipulation higher before the expansion lower. So if you play out, yeah, you have the open of that next daily candle. You see here you get some sort of a manipulation higher above the opening line. And that is your manipulation. Price breaks lower. That is exactly what you get there. Manipulation above here. Manipulation high to the low. That is where you have your range. And then the close of that candle. So from the expansion to low to the close. That is where you have your bottom weight. Right? And here, the range between the low and the open. That is where you have the body of those candles. And if you go into daily, that's exactly what you have here. After it takes out that swing low. So the majority of your profit taking will happen once you have identified the manipulation, right? So you go back here. Once you've identified the manipulation above here and it's given you a market structure break to the downside or some sort of a market structure shift, but essentially you wanted to confirm the continuation of the trend. Once you have that continuation confirmed, the majority of your high probability trades will always come between the high of the manipulation 
to the low of the expansion. Now, the low is going to always be slightly difficult to anticipate, but that is where you pair it up with key discount levels if you were bearish, because old lows simply become your targets, and so on. They are levels you expect for price to distribute towards and then possibly give you a retracement. Right, so after it's taken out this low, it's given you that retracement to seal off the bottom wick of that daily candle. But essentially from here, all the way to here, here, this is where you're going to look for the majority of your trades. And the majority of the times, this will always align with your session timings, whether that's London Open, New York, London Close, and so on. But remember, this depends on the asset. If it was an Asian asset, it would be slightly different. But if the asset focuses on DXY, a lot of the times you will have some sort of a manipulation at the start of the daily candle before you have the volatile distribution moves during the day, because that is where the most volume comes into play. So just because that was on the daily time frame doesn't mean the same thing can't apply to your hourly and all the way down to your five minute. Every single candle opens and closes in a similar fashion. They always open, have some sort of manipulation to create the bottom or upper wick before that distribution to create the range and then a minor retracement to create the opposing wick before you close off. The range between the open and the close of that candle gives you the body. So knowing how that works, that is where you can start to frame your bias and also your entries. Bias in the sense that you won't be tripped up when you see that manipulation and entries in the sense that you will always enter in the most optimal place, which is ideally during the manipulation or at the start of your distribution phase. They will always give you the most optimal risk to reward ratio and allow you to capitalize on the majority of the range. So that is the basics of how candle gets formed. Remember, every single asset have candlesticks. Every single candlestick has the same five characteristics. So this is just essentially the basic of trading. It works the same way with every single asset, every single time frame. We will touch upon it in more detail in future videos, but for now, make sure you backtest and have a strong knowledge of how candles get formed. Because even though it seems like basic knowledge, it's an extremely significant pillar in your trading. So, I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.